I guess I'm just gonna have to uh, enjoy this triple decker ego extravaganza on my own. Mmm. Mmm. Good, right? I don't know, you know the great thing about it? It's only 8,000 calories. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're exploring the favorite food of America's favorite little supernatural weirdo, Eleven's Triple Decker Ego Extravaganza. We're going to begin by executing a standard five-minute toast on our Eggos, and then get started on our extravaganza. We're starting with a layer of whipped cream, some Hershey's Kisses, waffle, whipped cream, Hershey's Kisses, waffle, whipped cream, Hershey's Kisses, waffle, whipped cream, Reese's Pieces. Eh, see, I tricked you. Oh, Hershey's Kisses, of course. Scatter some around the bottom for a festive decoration and what looked like a whole bunch of multicolored dollar store jelly beans. Gonna try and do our best here to achieve some kind of cross-section. It's, you know, exactly what we expected it to look like. Try to make a bite featuring all four toppings and as you can imagine, this tastes insane. So to improve upon this, we're gonna have to get a little creative. Let's start by severely upping our waffle game from last time. We're making yeasted waffles out of two and a half cups pastry flour, half a cup of malt powder, two tablespoons of cornmeal, two tablespoons tablespoons of buttermilk powder, half a teaspoon each of baking soda, salt, a teaspoon of white sugar, and a whole packet of active dry yeast. Sift all these ingredients together using a sifter. This is going to help make the batter a little bit easier to mix down the line. Then we're heating two and two-thirds cup of milk and half a cup of canola oil to 110 degrees and slowly drizzling it in, followed by two eggs that we're going to gently whisk until the batter just barely comes together. It's totally fine if there are still lumps, and then we're going to let the yeast bloom for two hours, during which time we're going to figure out our toppings. Now I thought to replace the fruitiness of the jelly beans and the crunch of the Reese's Pieces, we could use freeze-dried fruit, which it turns out does not crush up so well, but it does turn into a lovely crunchy powder when lightly processed in a food processor. Plus, I mean, how often is it that you get to make fruit smoke? Just make sure that you don't breathe this stuff in. Trust me. After a quick neti pot, it's time to make some whipped cream. We're gonna combine eight ounces of heavy whipping cream with two heaping teaspoons of white sugar and a little bit of vanilla paste or vanilla extract. Whip until whipped. We want a really firm, thick whipped cream so we can roll it into canels later on. Now, the only flavor I thought was missing from this monstrosity was maple syrup, so we're gonna make a very quick and simple maple butter sauce by combining one cup of maple syrup, half a cup of heavy cream, and two tablespoons of butter, bringing to a simmer and letting and cook for five to ten minutes or until thickened. I would go a little thicker than I did and make sure you chill completely before serving. Now as you can see after two hours our yeast has come alive and our batter has become bubbly and frothy and full of science and it's gonna make for a very light lacy waffle when we ladle it into our Belgian waffle maker. I'm going Belgian this time because I want it deep dish. Engage the muscle memory from every continental breakfast you've ever been to, flip, and cook for three to five minutes. This recipe yields a waffle so light and crispy, you can actually see through it if you hold it up to the light, and it benefits from being kept warm in a low oven until ready to serve. Speaking of which, let's lay down our toppings. We've got the hot fudge sauce and peanut butter drizzle from the Michael Scott pretzel a couple weeks ago. Check out the link in the corner to watch that. And our maple syrup butter sauce, which we are going to place a waffle segment on top of each and then top each one of those with a canal of whipped cream. To do this, heat a spoon in some hot water, dry it off, and use it to sort of carve out a little egg of whipped cream, which we're then gonna top with our freeze-dried fruit. I went with strawberry over the chocolate, banana over the peanut butter, and blueberry over the maple syrup. These flavors seem to make the most sense. And what are we left with? A breakfast bomb that is crunchy, creamy, sweet, fruity, chocolatey, basically all the things the version of the show was trying to be, but way more palatable, and most definitely going on the breakfast menu of my fantasy restaurant. 